Well, good morning, everybody in Facebook. Uh, good to see you. This is our Sunday morning Bible study, and I'm uh, so glad to be here with you today. And boy, it's a beautiful, beautiful morning this morning. We woke up and then had a little bit of rain and nice, cool, brisk morning. I tell you, <clears throat> it sure feels good rather than waking up and having a hot morning. And you know, it's it's the day. The day the day is the day the Lord's made. He's made it for us to rejoice and be glad in it and be happy here, Susan. Say hello, hey. everybody. <laughs> she, <laughs> so, so, yeah, Susan's got a little uh, a little bit of lipstick on her now. teeth. Now she is, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, so good to be with you today. And we're going to be studying in the, the Gospel of John, the third chapter. And uh, <clears throat> we're going to start off with the familiar verse. It's called... John 3 16 everybody knows that but that's not the main focus of our Bible study today but it definitely is a main focus in our life I'll tell you so let's get into the Word of God amen so we're gonna go on over to the Gospel of John the third chapter and the 16th verse and we're gonna start there and read and it says for God so loved <clears throat> he gave amen God so loved he gave you let me tell you something you're if you want to know if somebody loves you they're gonna be people who give to you that's that's true and you know <clears throat> the people who won't give people that are always taken you know I don't know if they're actually in love you or not hello Lisa good to see you today God bless you but anyhow going on it says, for God so loved, he gave his only begotten son, and he gave his best to us. So thank God for that. Jesus Christ is, it came to, to give us life and the life more abundantly. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Sue Ferguson, good to see you today. God bless you. For God did not sin his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved now, this is going to be our focus verse for today but we're going to look at some more of this verse going on down verse 18 it says he who believes in him is not condemned hallelujah if you believe in jesus there's no condemnation on you none whatsoever but he who does not believe is condemned already. Now, this is really a key part of the understanding condemnation or the judgment of sin upon a person. You are born into this, and we're going to see that in just a little bit. But condemnation or the judgment of sin is already upon everyone who's born from the loins of a man. And we'll talk more about it. It says, because... He has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. That would be Jesus Christ. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world. That would be Jesus. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. And for everyone practicing evil hates the light listen to the word practicing that's important to know because i'm going to let you know everybody in this whole wide world and you, if you're a born again christian you're going to you're going to mess up you're going to sin you're going to fall short of the glory of god but the key to it is practicing are you practicing sin because if you're practicing sin that sin is going to take a toll in your life it's going to have a wage for you that's going to be it's going to be hard it says, but everyone who practicing is every everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed. And when you come to the light, when you come to 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 Jesus, let me tell you, your deeds are exposed. You come to him because you know you need a savior. You come to him because you know you need somebody to take control of your life because you have messed it up. That's I remember August 17th, 1972. That's what I did. I came to the Lord Jesus Christ and I said, Lord, I need you. I need you to come into my life. I need you to take control of my life because I messed it up. I have sinned. And I came to the place where I realized I needed a savior. 
It says, but he who does, does the truth comes to the light, hallelujah, and that in and that, that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have been done in God. Hallelujah, that's a relationship. That is a relationship with the Almighty God. But look here at verse 17. It says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that he that the world through him might be saved. Now listen, Jesus didn't come to condemn anybody. He didn't come to condemn one soul. He didn't come, listen to me, he didn't come to condemn the harlot. He didn't come to condemn the homosexual. He didn't come to condemn the drug addict. He didn't come, he didn't come to condemn nobody. Listen, religious people will condemn you. People will condemn you. But Jesus is not condemning you or coming to you and saying, because of your sin, I, I can't accept you. That is not what Jesus is doing. In fact, it's just total opposite. He's receiving you and he wants you to embrace him and he wants you to him to embrace you. Listen, let's go into the scriptures. Let's prove this a little bit more. Let's get into this word. Hallelujah. It says, listen to what it says. It says, Romans 1, 8. It says, there's no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. Look what it says. Therefore, Therefore, there is therefore now, circle the word now, if you got a Bible or whatever, circle the word now, now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus, to those who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Now I'll let you know that this do not walk according to the flesh, according to the spirit is omitted because see, it is actually not in the original text. So we can read that verse this way. It says, there is therefore now, 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 right now, thank you, Jesus, no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. And that's what Jesus said. He says, that, he says for those who believe on me, there is no condemnation on you. No condemnation on those that are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm in Christ Jesus. How about you? Is Jesus the one that's, that you're worshiping, the one that you're serving? There is no judgment. They look, it's like a courtroom. It's like when you're going into a courtroom and, and, the, and this is the language of a courtroom and it says you've been found innocent or you've been found guilty. There's a sentence for the guilty and freedom for those that have been found innocent. And Jesus declares us innocent for by his grace, the believers in God, they don't face condemnation. John 3, 14, 1 John 3, 14, look what it says. It says, we know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. And he who does not love his brethren abides in death. Look what it says, whoever hates his brother, <sighs> whoever hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer will enter into uh, eternal life abiding uh, about <clears throat> into eternal life abiding in him listen Jesus is our life it says he it says we know that if you pass you pass from death to life you've passed from death I'm gonna let you know about loving brothers I there's there's people in the world that are unlovable right how many of you have ever had anybody in your life that's unlovable? But you know, God gives you that ability to love them. There, there are people that have wronged me. I'm 68 years old, going to be 69 in December. But I'm 68 years old, and in my lifetime, I have had so many people have wronged me and hurt me and done things to me in, in, the, in all these years. And you know, there's times, there's a couple of times I just held on to it and I gripped I gripped onto it. I have a right to, to hold this against them. I have a right to uh, not forgive them. But you know, that hurt me more than it hurt them. And you know, when I realized that if I were to turn that around and instead of holding that against them, I would love them, I found out that that love flowing through me brings healing not only to me, but sometimes to the situation that's going on with whoever you have in conflict with. And so I found that the love of God is better 
than holding something against someone. And because, see, that life in me, that eternal life in me is flowing out of me into the lives of others. Now, listen, you know, whenever a garden hose is turned on, it gets wet, right? Because the water's flowing through it just as well. Well, it's the same way with the love of God. When it starts flowing through you, yet the love of God affects you as much as it affects the person that you're demonstrating that love toward. Now, <clears throat> the Bible teaches that every human being will be brought before the judgment seat of Christ. Now, hallelujah. Listen, let's look at the scripture. I, a lot of folks, you know, don't want to think about judgment, but there is a time that we're all going to all be judged before Jesus. You know, we're going to stand before him. He said, we all must, we all, all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ that we may, listen to what it's going to say, that each one may receive the things done in his body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Now, listen, there's going to be a foundation of Christ. And on that foundation of Christ is going to be laid everything that we've done. Now, the sin, the sin that brought condemnation is not going to be there. You know why it's not going to be there? Because Jesus has already paid the price for that sin. The only thing that's going to be there is the deeds that we have done. Good deeds, bad deeds, all those deeds are going to be laid out on the foundation of Christ, on that platform of Christ's righteousness. And it's going to be tested by fire. And that fire is going to burn away that which was not of God and that which we did with God, that which we worked with God. Remember the last verse that, that talked about the deeds, that, that those that are walking in the light, that their deeds will be manifest, that they were done in God. Listen, there's going to be a time in our life that we're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. The Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die, and then the judgment. All these deeds that we've done in our life are going to be put upon that foundation, and fire, the fire of righteousness is going to burn it away, and, and, and the, which is, that which is not done in God. But let me tell you something. That what we did with the Lord God in relationship with him on this earth is going to remain. It's going to be a reward. It's going to be like like the the jewels. Uh, it's going to be like gold and silver. It's going to be like the precious stones and rubies and sapphires. It's going to be precious. It's going to be something that is this worth a lot. But listen, there's going to be a lot of folks that's going to be suffering because see, they're, all the deeds they've done has been selfish deeds. All the deeds they've done is whatever they wanted. And so therefore, it's going to be all burned away and there will be no reward. But listen, the Bible says that you're going to be saved anyway by, because of Jesus Christ, what he did on the cross of Calvary. But listen, all of us are going to stand before that judgment seat. So that means this. Just because Jesus died on the cross, thank you, Jesus, just because he took all of your sin upon his own body on the tree, thank you, Lord Jesus, just because he paid the debt in full for the punishment of those sins in, in, in your life, completely paid in full, you don't have to pay one smidgen of it. Just because all that's been done, that doesn't mean that you're going to walk away without having Jesus say, let's talk about what you've done in this earth. There won't be any condemnation. There just won't be any rewards if you don't if you've done nothing with him in relationship. But if you've done something with him in relationship, you're going to see great reward. You're going to see wonderful. I believe this is what I believe in. What I read in the Bible, the Bible says that we're all going to receive a crown of those that that will do the things with God in him in relationship, they're going to receive a crown of righteousness that's going to be put upon their head. And then that crown of righteousness are going to be the jewels of that we're talking about, that of, of the deeds that we've done together with him. And so therefore, those jewels and that crown is going to be placed upon our head. But I believe that we're going to all bow our knee before the Lord Jesus Christ and take that crown off and set it before his feet and say, Lord Jesus, but if it weren't for you, I would have this. I would not have this crown. You're the one who gave me the ability to have this crown. 
You're the one that grew, drew me in and gave me relationship with you. You're the one who called me and said, do these things. Let's do this together. Let's work together. Let's go to Peru. Let's minister to this person. Let's touch this heart. Let's reach out on Facebook and touch people's lives. You know, let's do things together. That's what Jesus is saying. Let's do things together. And those things that we've done together, he brought us to that point. Not me, not you, but he brought us in and he gave us this right to walk together with him. Hallelujah. Listen, thank God it's going to be Jesus himself that's going to be judging us. And it says here, and has given him authority. This is that God's given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the son of man. So Jesus is the one that's going to be doing the judgment. Thank you, Lord. I am so happy about that. I'm glad it's not angels that's doing the judgment. I'm glad it's not you that's doing the judgment. If it were you, you might not like me. You might not treat me as well as he does. But listen, this is going to be a judgment of mercy. It's going to be a judgment of of, of of kindness. It's going to be a judgment. It's not going to be a harsh judgment to where you're going to feel pain and hurt. The only way you'll feel pain and hurt, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, is the only way you're going to feel pain and hurt is because you didn't do anything and you everything that you've done in your life was going to be burned away because it was selfishness. It was whatever you wanted. You know, I'm going to let you know. Listen, I, I don't mind. I think everybody ought to have a nice boat if they want one. But let me tell you, if the Lord spoke to you about that money that you spent on that boat to give it to somebody or to minister it to a missionary or to give it to a to a work of God and you didn't you went ahead and bought the boat guess what burnt is gone and you missed out on that jewel listen to what I'm saying to you folks but the gospel of John the 18th chapter look what it says it says whoever doesn't believe on him is condemned already look but he who does not believe is condemned already he who believes on him is not condemned. There's no con condemnation. But he does not believe is condemned already. What does that mean? That means that what you when you were born into this earth, see the Bible says that, that, that by, through one man, that would be Adam, sin entered into the world and death by sin. And so death passed on to all men for all of sin. Now listen, this is what happened. When Adam sinned, when he committed transgression against God, when he had his first child, he passed that on through his loins. He passed on the judgment of condemnation for sin to his, his sons. And then from then and then on and then on and, and me and you, when we were born from the loins of our father, we were born under condemnation. We were born in sin and so therefore uh, uh, sin is upon us or the judgment of sin is upon us now listen let me explain this to you it's a state of you know whenever jesus says he's our righteousness he is our righteousness in other words he took us and he put us in the place of righteousness in him so we're in righteousness in christ so in god's eyes we're in right standing with him or in a standing or a place of righteousness. I'm in a place of righteousness. Righteousness is mine through Jesus Christ. I stand before God totally 100% righteous, not because of my deeds, but because of what Jesus has done. Jesus, what he did, gave me righteousness. Now, Adam, what he did gave everybody condemnation. So everybody that's born of the loins of a man is born under this condemnation. They're in the state of, or under the state of, and in standing of condemnation or judgment upon them because of sin, the sin of Adam. And so therefore, when Jesus came and died on the cross and was raised from the dead and sat on the right-hand side of God, he gave everybody the opportunity to get out from under this condemnation. And this is how you do it. You believe on what Jesus is and has done for us, who he is and what he has done for us at the cross of Calvary, that he took our sin, 
bored in his own body on the sea in, on the tree rather and that when he was raised from the dead he was raised for our righteousness raised for our justification and that whoever will receive this and believe this will be saved they'll receive eternal life and they will come out from under that condemnation that state of condemnation and they'll be put into the state of righteousness we are put in the state of righteousness i am the righteousness of god in christ jesus does that mean i do everything righteous no 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 thank god I, i'm in that state of righteousness because all i got to do is just turn around and go the right direction when i find out that i've done something wrong but listen just because you're in the state of condemnation just because you do something right doesn't take you out of that condemnation. It doesn't put you into righteousness either. See, what you do, it doesn't have anything to do with this other than receiving Jesus Christ and believing on him and, and be, making him the Lord and Savior of your life. That's what takes you out of this state of condemnation and puts you in the state of righteousness with him. Hallelujah. So <clears throat> let's let's go to Romans uh, 20, uh, 7.21. And this is what it says. I'll move this over a little bit. It says, and I find, I find then a law that, that evil is present in me. In other words, I still do things wrong. That one who w wills to do good. I, I want to do good, but I still do things wrong. Anybody, anybody uh, can say amen to that? It says, I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. In other words, I want god's way and his word in me to be working in me but i see another law in uh, in my in my members warring against the law uh of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members that's be in your body and your unrenewed mind your spirit is saying i want to walk in the righteousness of god I want to do the things I know that's right to do before God. But then because you hadn't renewed your mind, you hadn't taken the word of God and put it in your heart and in your mind, then you have this thing worn in you also that says, but I, I can't help but do this thing. Your body craves to do it. You know, let, let's just take something everybody deals with, okay? How about donuts or food? I mean, let me tell you something. I have times that I know that I'm supposed to be eating right and I don't eat right, right? I, but my mind says, oh, that's going to be such a good donut. I mean, look at that thing. It's right there in front of me. What am I supposed to do? And your body's craving that donut. And what's your spirit saying? No, don't eat the donut. Don't eat the donut. But you reach out anyway. And you grab it and you take a bite of it. And you think, oh, man. I know I'm not supposed to eat this donut, but it sure has a great flavor. It sure tastes so good. And you eat the whole thing, and then you eat three more behind it. You know, and so therefore, you had inside of you, you had something warring. You had inside of you saying, no, don't eat it. But you also had, you know, your flesh and your mind saying, yeah, I remember the taste of that donut. I'm, I, I just can't help it. I've got to have it. Well, you know, it, that's a very simple example of what we're talking about but listen inside of you you're a brand new spirit you're a brand new creation the old old things have passed away behold all things become new inside of you you terry the spirit man is there's no condemnation to you in fact inside of you the spirit man there's no sin inside of you you do not sin but listen because you don't have your mind renewed because you don't train your flesh to do what's right and the Bible says that even your flesh can come to the point to where it'll know the difference between good and evil, right and wrong. And so even because you haven't done that, you have these things warring inside of you and says, oh, wretched man, who uh, that I am, who will deliver me from the body of death? Well, that would be Jesus Christ. Thank God, Jesus Christ. I thank God through Jesus Christ, my Lord. Hallelujah. So then with my mind, <clears throat> I myself serve the law of God, but with my flesh, the law of sin. In other words, with my with my heart, my mind, I'm going to serve the law of God. When I renew my mind and change my thinking, I'm going to serve the law of God. Glory to God. Listen, Romans, um, Romans chapter 
Uh, well, I'm, I've already read that. Let's go on down. It says, <clears throat> I want to go to Philippians. Hey, hey, you're good. Philippians 3, 9. Glory to God. It says, but, but I'm found in him not having my own righteousness. This is talking about being righteous in Christ. I'm going to go back up here and read. It says, yet I, it says, yet indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Jesus Christ, for whom I have suffered loss of all things, and I count them as rubbish. All the things in my past I count as rubbish, but that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Jesus Christ which is from God by faith that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering and being conformed to his death. And if by any means I may attain to the resurrection of the dead, I want to know, I want to be found in Jesus and in his righteousness. I don't want to be found in my righteousness. I, I don't I want to be found in his righteousness. And for me to do that, I've got to receive him and what he's done for me on the cross. Now, listen, what happens when you do that, when you receive this, the first thing that happens to you is you quit condemning people. You know, you quit condemning people that are, that are, um, that, that don't have, or they're living in sin. <clears throat> I'm, 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 you know, homosexuality, for instance. You know, we, we as Christians, we don't believe that that's God's best for you. <laughs> Listen, drinking alcohol is not God's best for you. Hey, eating too much is not God's best for you. What's God's best for you is for you to live in him and in his state of righteousness and by receiving him into your heart. And then when you do that, you inside are a new person and it starts to affect everything from the inside out. And so we, we've had people that have come to us in counseling and, and uh, they are homosexual, homo, living in a homosexual life. And, and they even had questions and asking honest questions about it. And we never condemned them. We never said you're wrong. The God's against you. The judgment, the judgment of the Lord is upon you. Well, listen, the judgment of the Lord is upon everybody that hasn't received Jesus Christ into their heart. We really, we, that's what I'm sharing with you today. And so therefore, even us, even me, even you, even the best of persons in this world, the judgment of condemnation is upon you because you were born from the seed or the, of your, the, from your father's loins. And that results all the way back to Adam. So you're under the condemnation. Everybody is. But listen, there the the sin or the condemnation of sin, it's it's like the tree. The tree produces fruit. You know, homosexuality is fruit. Drinking too much is fruit of the condemnation. Listen, uh, having relationships outside of marriage is the fruit. All the things that we look at it are so bad, we call it sin, and we want to judge people and put the OX up, you know, don't come near me. You know, all, everybody has that in their life. Some people's fruit are evident, or some people, the Bible says some people's sins are evident, and others are not. There are some people that look so good to go to church every Sunday, they do everything right, they pay their tithes, they doing everything the way they're supposed to do it. But this one day they die and they find themselves in hell. And they say, why, have I, why am I in hell? What have I done? I've done everything right. I went to church every Sunday. I made sure my kids got to church. I paid my tithes. I did everything right. And here I am in hell. Why am I in hell? Because it was all you. You thought that your righteousness would take you out of the state of condemnation. It doesn't. Your good deeds doesn't do that. No more than your sin puts you into the state of condemnation. You, Your personal sin doesn't put you in the state of condemnation. You're there because you were born into it. Everybody's born into that state of condemnation. 
but everybody comes out of it through receiving Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, asking him to come into their heart. Listen, we're, I want to take you to a scripture, and uh, we're going to go there. I'm going to, uh, let's see here, get my Bible here. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We're going to look at this, and we're going to see some, uh, in verse uh, 17, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, says, Therefore, now come on, Mr. Bible, come on up. He's trying his best. I don't know what's going on. Oh, there it is. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. If you receive Jesus Christ into your heart, you become a new creation, a new person inside. It says the old things have passed away. Everything in the past is gone. It's gone. Look at it that way. It says, behold, all things have become new. In me, Terry Eubanks, from the top of my head to the soles of my feet, everything has become new. I'm a new person in him. And it says now, the word now is important. See how I got it highlighted? Now, all things are of God. All things are of God. The, the, this is uh, so good to understand this and know it, that you are a new person in Christ. Receive it. Embrace it. Take and say all the old things that I, of my life have passed away. They're under the blood of Jesus Christ. They are washed away. And everything has become new in my life. From the day I received Jesus in my heart is the day everything become new. And now all things are of God. Now listen, who reconciled, or the word reconciled means to be brought back to. Who reconciled us, brought us back to, to him through Jesus Christ and has given to us, given to me and you, the ministry of reconciliation or going out and sharing the gospel with somebody like what I'm doing right now to bring uh, you back or bring someone back to Christ, to bring them back what? Into the same relationship they had before man, Adam fell, back to the place to where he was just before he had received that transgression of eating that fruit. Listen, God wants to restore you back, and he does. From the inside out again, from your spirit, and then the next thing you know, you renew your mind, and you, everything starts changing in your whole life. And it says, give it to us, the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ reconciling. We're supposed to go tell people that God was in Christ reconciling or bringing the world to himself. Listen, not imputing their trespasses to them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now, not imputing their trespasses to them. Listen to what this means. The word imputing means crediting to. In other words, I could take a credit card. I got a little credit card right here in my drawer. I'll pull it out and hopefully get it out. I'll take this credit card. There it is. That's a credit card. If I take this credit card and I and I swipe it or I insert it, you know, a little tab, make sure that I insert it into this machine, it's going to credit or it's going to impute upon this card, and which will be upon me, debt. In other words, God is not imputing or crediting debt to anyone for their trespasses or for their sins. That's what it's saying, not imputing debt or trespasses, not imputing or putting debt upon them for what they have done. Listen, my sin and your sin ain't none of the devil's business. And, and one of the other things you need to understand is that God is not sitting there counting up your sins. It's washed away under the blood of Jesus Christ. 1 John 1, 7 says, If we walk in the light as he is in the light, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Hallelujah. From all sin. That means if I'm walking in Christ, if I'm walking in a relationship with Jesus, even if I sin, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses me from that sin. That's what the Bible says, not what Terry says. And so many years, I, I hate this, this devilish teaching that says that if you sin, and, and you go out and you get and you die and you haven't repented from that sin, you're going to go to hell. That's a damn lie from hell. 
Excuse my language, but it's true. It is a damnable life from hell. The blood of Jesus Christ continually cleanses you from sin. Now, I'm going to let you know something. If you turn away from Jesus, if you turn away and you walk away from him, best be careful. You can walk away from what Jesus has done for you in your life. Listen, so many places in the scripture I can show you that. And, and you, you can go back and you look at the very beginning, the very Bible, uh, part of the Bible where, where Esau gave up his birthright. He just walked away from it just for a bowl of, uh, of uh, partridge so he could have something to eat. Listen, so many people turned away. Remember when Lot and them came out and then his wife, Lot's wife, turned back. He turned back. What did she do? She turned to a pillow. Of salt. Was she saved? Yes, she was saved. She had already walked out of, out of danger. She was away from danger already, but she turned away and turned back. Listen, be careful about turning back. Be careful about letting go of what God has done for you and letting go of the Christ in your life. Be careful of that because that is a very dangerous thing. But I'll let you know something. God is not holding your trespasses against you. He's not imputing your trespasses against you. And it says to them, and it says, <clears throat> and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. And now then, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us, pleading through us. We employ you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. We're, God is pleading through us to people, be reconciled. Be in, come back to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Be reconciled to God. It says, for he made him, God made Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin for us, that we might be made or we might become the righteousness of God in him. Whenever I received Jesus in my life, I became the righteousness of God in Jesus. Not in me, not in my goodness, not in my righteousness, but in Jesus Christ. I became the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. That is good news for everybody. I, I want to take you to another scripture. And this is Hebrews in chapter um, uh, 10, and I think it's around this scripture here. I'll have to look at it when it comes up. It says, yeah, here it is. It says, uh, well, let me make sure. Okay, for if we, verse 26, 10, 26, for if we, uh, I don't want to go there. Let me see, make sure. Uh, whoop. I have got to find it. Romans, I'm going to go to Hebrews 8. I'm going to change up on you. Go to Hebrews 8 because it says it the same thing in Hebrews 8 as it does in he Hebrews 10. And I should have went there. For this is the covenant. Here it is, right? Hebrews 8, 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. And guess what? We are the house of Israel as Christians. When we received Christ, we received everything that belongs to a Abraham. The Bible says if you're Christ and you're Abraham's seed, Galatians 3 and 29, if you're Christ and you're Abraham's seed and you're heir according to the promise. So this promise is our promise. For this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I'll put my law in their minds and I'll write them on their hearts and and they will be my I'll be their God and they will be my people. So when you receive Christ in your your heart and you received Him in your life, immediately you became a new creation in Him. And those laws were written upon your mind. That will be the mind of Christ and those and on your heart. And it says and, and it says verse eleven. And none of them shall teach their neighbor and, and uh, none of his brothers, saying, Know the Lord. Know the Lord. Do, nobody's got to teach you. When you receive Jesus in your heart, nobody's got to teach you to say and say, know the Lord, because you will know him. When you receive him in your heart, you start a new relationship with him. Know the Lord, for all shall know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them. And it says, for I will be merciful to what? Their unrighteousness and their sins and lawless deeds, I will remember no more. Listen to this. I'll remember them no more. That means he's not holding your sins 
against you, your trespasses against you. You've been brought out from under that state of condemnation, put into the state of righteousness, and Jesus and God is not going to judge you for your sin. They're going to judge you for the deeds you do, and it's going to be, remember earlier we talked about this, but he's not going to judge you for sin. You, as a Christian, I will never go before the judgment seat of God, and he says, oh, by the way, this sin you did, this sin you did, no, he won't do that. He won't bring it up. He won't remember it. In fact, there's times that you commit sin and I've committed sin and then asked God to forgive me for it and then felt bad about it later, went back and talked to him a little bit more about it. And he said, what are you talking about? I forgot about that thing. I want you to forget about it. Your sins and your lawless deeds, I'll remember no more. So listen, folks, remember this. Everybody's born under condemnation. And if you don't receive Christ in your life, you're just going to go into eternity under that condemnation, that judgment of sin because of Adam. And so therefore you will miss heaven and, and altogether. But if you receive Jesus and you receive him into your heart and what he's done in your life, then you become a new creation. And then what happens is, is you move from that state of condemnation into the state of righteousness. You are become righteous in the eyes of God and in the eyes of Jesus, in the eyes of the angels of God, in the eyes of all the demons and devils in hell and Lucifer himself. Then you have to renew your mind to make sure you understand that you are in the state of righteousness and you put that on as a breastplate and hold it up and say, look, I am righteous, not because of my deeds, but because of what Jesus has done for me. Amen. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed this this teaching and, and all. And, and, and listen, I want you to share and love and like this uh, because other people need to see it. Other people need to, to embrace it and say, I want the righteousness that's free to me and been given to me by God. I want it to, to be the part of my life. And so you can reach out. This could be a good deed. This could be something that you're working together with God to bring somebody into this righteousness. And one day it might be laid upon that foundation of righteousness. There's Susan. She wants to be in the picture again. <laughs> <laughs> and so love it, like it, and share it. Okay. Well, look here, guys. We love you guys, and we sure appreciate you coming on and being a part of our teaching and a part of our life, and and hopefully one day we'll be able to get together and uh, okay. do it in person. Yes. And so God bless you, Love and you. we will Bye -bye. see you next Sunday.